the uh, situation in Israel now for the administration seems to be trying to find the balance between Israel's right to defend itself as a country and protecting the lives of civilian uh, Palestinians. Do you think that yeah. you and, and uh, the Israeli government have achieved that balance, or has it reached a point, or when might it reach a point, where the correct balance is simply a ceasefire? So our position as the United States and the position that the president and, and, and I and we have taken from the day of the horror of October 7, where, as you know, 1,200 people were massacred, many of them young people who were simply going to a concert, um, where, where women were, were assaulted and abused, uh, our position has always been that Israel has a right to defend itself, without any question. And how it does so matters. And as I have said many times, and I think we know that far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And it is important then that, and we have made clear our perspective on this, that, um, th that there be a lessening of the intensity and, and more precision around how Israel um, goes after Hamas and the leadership of Hamas. And as you know, Secretary Blinken, Secretary uh, Austin have paid now repeated trips to the region to make clear our, our position on that. Um, but... We do also need to focus on what is happening now toward what is possible and, and, and should be possible the day after, as we call it. Uh, Lawrence, as you know, I was in Dubai recently meeting with a number of leaders, including many Arab leaders, to talk about our commitment as the United States to a two-state solution and a commitment to doing the hard work that that will require to get to a place where we, for the principles that we have stated, um, will insist there be no reoccupation of Gaza by the Israelis, there will be no forced displacement of Palestinians, but we work toward equal measures of security, prosperity, and freedom for Israelis and for Palestinians. And so that is a big part of our goal at this point as well, which is to do what is possible to lay the pathway for that possibility and that goal. Uh, Secretary Austin, uh, speaking in Israel yesterday, said that uh, protecting Palestinian civilians in Gaza is both a moral duty and a strategic imperative. Does the Israeli government agree with you on that? We have repeatedly made that point clear in both public and private conversations. And um, I can, of course, not speak for the Israeli government. I will not speak for the Israeli government. But our position has been clear, and we've been quite adamant about that. As you probably know, um, from the beginning, for example, we have been pushing for increased humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza, understanding that the consequence of not supplying that aid has been dire. And we've all seen the images and, and we've witnessed, um, therefore, uh, real tragedy in terms of the loss of, of innocent life. The other foreign policy uh, crisis that President Biden has been managing, that you've been managing along with him, is obviously Vladimir Putin's attack and war on Ukraine. Ukraine funding uh, is now, of course, facing struggles that it wasn't facing a year ago. Uh, how important is it, and, and what is the future of Ukraine funding? If you get it now, will, will there be more support for Ukraine throughout the year? Lawrence, it's critically important that we see this through. From the beginning, let's be clear, when this happened on February 24th uh, of that year, what we saw is a violation of longstanding international rules and norms. The, and the, those rules and norms being the importance of protecting sovereignty and territorial integrity, the importance of standing up against any nation forcibly trying to change borders. And we, the United States of America, have been a leader for the world and our allies, and I, in particular Joe Biden has been a profound leader 
in bringing together nations to the point that we are now looking at an expansion of NATO, where some before this happened question the relevance of NATO, its very existence. So the role of the United States of America to stand on principle, foundational principles for the globe about what leads to security, stability, and prosperity is at stake. And I travel the world. I've now met with over 100 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And even in my most recent travels, recently in the last few weeks to the United Kingdom, to Dubai, I can tell you that our allies and our adversaries around the goal, around the world, excuse me, are watching to see if the United States is going to follow through in its commitment to these principles. And I think the tragedy of the moment is that there are people in Washington, D.C., who don't actually understand the significance of this in terms of America's role of leadership, global leadership, and instead playing politics. In terms of the security package as a whole, it includes assistance for, for Ukraine to see through commitment we made to important principles. It includes assistance to Israel, to what we need to do in terms of assistance to Taiwan, and then, of course, um, more resources going to the border. So I think that it is an issue that everyone who is watching um, should, should connect with in terms of urging members of Congress to actually participate in a bipartisan way in particular on issues that relate directly or indirectly to our national security. And you and I, Lawrence, have talked about it many times. When I was in the Senate for the four years I was there, one of my favorite experiences as a senator was being on the Senate Intelligence Committee. And I'll tell you why. That meeting took place in a skiff, which is a secure room where no one could bring in their cell phones. There was no public, no press, just us. And people would then walk in that room, regardless of their political party, and take off their jackets, have a cup of coffee, roll up their sleeves, and not act as Democrats or Republicans, but act as Americans who should prioritize, first and foremost, our national security and the best interest of the people of our country in terms of ensuring that we are standing for our principles.